Good evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Jefferson Robbins, in for Grant Olson all this week. Before we get to today's top news stories, we need to take a quick look outside our weather window at the beautiful day that was unfolded before us. This is our view looking toward Antiat from our Waterville SkyFi camera. Beautiful day, visibly a beautiful day, all day today. But all those sunny skies were joined by one of our frequent unwelcome winter guests, an air stagnation advisory. The calm winds and a thermal inversion can serve to trap smoke and other pollutants down low where you and I get to breathe them in until fresh air blows through. The stagnation can also mean it's colder near the valley floors than it is up on the mountains and ridges. Will it dissipate soon? Probably not. This advisory does not end until one week from today. And similar temperatures and cloud conditions are expected to stick around through the end of this week. So right now, a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. A 12th person has died from a COVID-19 outbreak in a senior care facility in Tanasket. Scammers want your money, and police agencies are warning of a new wave of fraudulent phone calls. And Slidewaters hits a settlement with the state over its refusal last summer to close its gates due to the pandemic. But first, we begin tonight at Wenatchee Valley College, which announced Tuesday that its classes will remain primarily online through spring in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. That means for both winter and spring, all lecture classes will be online and only a small number of approved hands-on classes will be able to meet in person. In addition, both of the college's campuses will remain closed to the public. WVC says that closure will remain in effect until the college receives further guidance from local health districts or the governor's office. 135 people in the Wenatchee Valley tested positive for COVID-19 on Tuesday alone, and Confluence Health says 28 people are hospitalized right now for treatment. Well, Okanagan Public Health said Tuesday that a 12th person at a senior care facility in Tenasket has died from COVID-19. All 12 deaths at North Valley Extended Care have happened since November 18th. 32 residents and numerous caregivers have tested positive for the virus. Okanagan Public Health says the hospitalized caregivers appear to be recovering well. The Wenatchee police are warning of a pattern of scam phone calls emerging in the city. Several people have allegedly lost thousands of dollars to fraudulent phone callers who urge them to buy gift cards and then turn over the card information to the callers. The Grant County Sheriff's Office reports a similar scam. It's the kind of fraud operation that seems to reemerge every year or so. If you receive a suspicious phone call of this nature, report it to the Wenatchee Valley Police Agencies by calling 663-9911. The popular Lake Chelan Water Park Slide Waters has settled its dispute with the State Department of Health over the park's refusal to comply with COVID-19 emergency orders. The park opened last June in defiance of Governor Jay Inslee's orders closing non-essential businesses. It operated for almost 30 days before the state ordered its closure in mid-July. The conservative nonprofit Freedom Foundation, which represented Slidewaters when it unsuccessfully sued to overturn the governor's pandemic orders, now says the Department of Health has agreed not to fine Slidewaters or revoke its permits. However, the state agency tells NCW Life it can't confirm details of the settlement because it has not yet been approved by an administrative law judge. Slidewaters was also fined almost $10,000 by the State Department of Labor and Industries. The park has appealed that penalty. Coming up next, police continue to probe the arson fires that damaged two, two churches in Brewster. And a Wenatchee nonprofit shares in some development grant money from the state's public school agency. I'm Jefferson Robbins, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and air, call Alpine Air, 662-6846. It's estimated that one-third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. 
Winter is a great time to trade in your current hot tub. Turn your old hot tub into money with Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa's trade-in program. You can save $500 to $1,000 off of any new Artesian Spa or take advantage of a free Bluetooth music experience. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa recommends draining your hot tub every three months. Ask us about our drain and refill special. Stop on by Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa today. Mary Maids of Wenatchee has been professionally cleaning and sanitizing homes and businesses in North Central Washington since 1998. Mary Maids uses commercial grade cleaners and virucides. Mary Maids has implemented additional safety and sanitation protocols. They are strictly following CDC guidelines for the safety of their clients and employees. For expert help with cleaning and sanitizing your home or business, call or look up Mary Maids of Wenatchee to schedule your free estimate today. You love to help others. You need a solid career. You can have it all with help from Charter College. Our 10-month medical assistant program prepares you to work in healthcare settings like physician offices, rehab centers, and clinics. You'll learn to take patient vitals, assist with exams, administer injections, and maintain medical records. When you're ready to launch a rewarding healthcare career, visit chartercollege.edu because we work to get you to work. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. A former Chelan man who pleaded guilty last spring to child molestation is now suspected of trying to contact another child. 20-year-old Marcos Luis Diaz was ordered not to interact with minors as part of his probation. The State Department of Corrections says Diaz, who now lives in Spokane County, reached out by, by Facebook Messenger to a 17-year-old friend of his original victim. The department wants a Chelan County judge to sentence him to no more than 14 days in jail if he's found guilty of the violation. Well, Brewster police continue to investigate a pair of November 15th church fires with both now determined to be arson. The early morning fires caused extensive damage to the New Testament Baptist Church and minor damage to Sacred Heart Catholic Church less than a block away. Both fires were set about two or three o'clock that morning with few details released by the Brewster Police Department. Reverend Pedro Bautista Peraza at the Catholic Church said someone broke a window at the church and threw incendiary materials inside, but the fire was limited to a piece of carpet and a chair. Pastor Corey Higdon at New Testament Church said the damage at his building was extensive. Services are now being live streamed from a temporary facility while church leaders determine whether to repair or replace the church building. Police Chief Marcos Ruiz continues to ask anyone with information on the fires to contact his department. Well, the Community for the Advancement of Family Education, or CAFE, has won a share of $8 million in statewide grant funding, grant funding from the Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction. The Wenatchee nonprofit, founded six years ago by Jorge and Alma Chacon, is among 38 local community-based organizations to win one of the grants. For CAFE, the funding is in the range of $250,000 to $400,000. The grants are funded by the CARES Act to aid in COVID-19 recovery, and they're aimed at direct service to students, such as support for remote learning, tutoring, and social-emotional learning. CAFE provides literacy and academic support to clients throughout the Wenatchee Valley. Well, you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, Eric Granstrom takes us inside the Les Schwab Community Toy Drive, which is gathering Christmas goods for children in need around the valley. That plus weather and sports with Dan Kuntz, still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Kerry Condotta. This is the 12th District TV show, aired eight times every week on NCW Life TV. We cover business and politics like no one else does it because I've been there and done it. 30 years self-employed, 16 years in the House of Representatives, and 12 years running campaigns across the state of Washington. That resume means you're getting information you can't get anywhere else. This is the 12th District. I'm Kerry Condotta. There are so many possibilities for you to learn local right here at Wenatchee Valley College. Take classes towards a degree or certificate in more than 50 areas of study. Wenatchee Valley College now offers a large variety of virtual classes, including labs, sign language, music, and machining, and they have the resources to help you succeed in virtual classes. So when a college degree is your goal, learn local at Wenatchee Valley College. 
The 2021 models are arriving at Sangster Motors. General Motors is on the move with the all-new 2021 Yukon. Yukon is redesigned from the ground up with a bold new look and all the latest technology. Also new is the Canyon AT4 pickup. This off-road equipped mid-sized truck will challenge any rival for performance and value. Both of these models will offer Duramax diesel options for maximum power and economy. The American Challenge is game on at Sangster Motors now. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is your place for famous blues, brews, and barbecue. Currently, Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is open for takeout. Owner Justin Hefner and his staff are just as excited as you to get back to their regularly scheduled full menu, music, and poker. So stay tuned. Meanwhile, Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is serving a limited menu for lunch and dinner takeout. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere, the coolest place in town. When you call Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, you get 35 years of experience and customer service in the Wenatchee Valley. Dick's friendly staff strongly believe in repairing before replacing and service all major brands of HVAC units. Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning is your local independent trained comfort specialists, proudly serving all of North Central Washington. Call 884-6444 today. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. The Les Schwab Community Toy Drive is an annual local effort to provide seasonal gifts to needy children in the Wenatchee Valley. Eric Granstrom of NCW Life was at Hooked on Toys earlier today for an event featuring kids shopping for kids. It officially got underway on Saturday, and Brent Rhodes from KKRV tells us that it got off to a great start. The response that we got last week was, was amazing, and I, I think about uh, one couple that came from the Met How that has visited the last three years, and they came walking out with a complete shopping cart full of toys. They visited with us for a few minutes, and I thanked them for coming, and they said, oh, no, we're not done. We'll, we're going through again. So they came back out with a second cart. And, it, you know, that's an amazing story. But you know what? If you bought a box of Legos, it's just as amazing to us. Kirk Mosier is the regional manager of Les Schwab here in the Wenatchee Valley, a huge part of the Les Schwab Community Toy Drive. He says he can't believe the amount of support both by individuals and sponsors to start this year's drive. You know, we've had some uh, significant donations from uh, Walmart, just as is one example. We've had um, August Edge Realty. Uh, we had a lady come in yesterday and buy six bicycles and spend over $1,200 on toys for the toy drive. You know, it, it's really critical this year. I mean, our sponsors have, have really stepped to the plate again, even in a difficult year. And, you know, we really need help this year. You know, I just talked about uh, having a lot of toys, but uh, with the pandemic we've been experiencing, it's, it's going to be crucial that we get all the support we can. We're, we're going to have probably around three or 400 more kids than what we normally do. So that number's going to be closer to 1,500 this year. Of course, the reason here today is to have a couple of kids shop for kids fourth annual shopping spree with uh, children. We selected a couple of kids, uh, Jackson and Merrick, and they got to come down today and spend $1,500 shopping for kids uh, for our community. Jackson, what's your favorite toy? Um, probably just like, um, uh, like a classic toy, like a game or something. All right, or you got the games right in front of you. Yeah. Go for it, bud. Jackson and Merrick did a fantastic job of coming up with some great toys for both boys and girls. Yeah. This one. So, and it was great, you know, that getting to help out other kids who wouldn't usually get presents. So, thank yeah, you for choosing us to yeah. get to do that. Merrick, what did you think of this today? Mm, it was fun. So, bags and bags of toys will be headed to the toy shop, ready for distribution to our organizations through which we work to distribute those toys to children right here in the Wenatchee Valley. At Hooked on Toys, with the first of two shopping sprees, I'm Eric Granstrom on the NCW Life Channel. Merry Christmas from the Les Schwab Community Toy Drive. Thanks for that report, Eric. We'll see you again later on for sports news. Right now, Dan Koontz is here to enlighten us on Central Washington's long-term weather outlook. Dan? Good to see you folks again on what turned into be another beautiful day here in the Wenatchee Valley. We're on a real winning streak after we got through the Thanksgiving weekend 
We've had gobs of gooey good sunshine for the last couple of days. Things are going to start changing just a little bit, though. As we get deeper and deeper uh, into the week and closer to the weekend, we're going to see a little bit more freezing fog now in the morning and a little less sunlight in the afternoon after we've had another beautiful day today. Highs in the lower 40s. Great view. This is from our Waterville camera. Looking back over to the Chelan County side of the river, we can see beautiful Antioch in the background or suburban Antioch. Can't quite make out downtown Antioch. The gateway to recreation. That's what they call themselves now. Of course, Antioch used to be known uh, with the big sign as you drove through Antioch. Stop here and go to the bathroom on your way to Chelan. Now they're the gateway to recreation. Much better. Beautiful day. Great view from our Waterville camera up above the Waterville Plateau, up on the Waterville Plateau. All right, let's take a look at some of the statistics as we work our way through this Wednesday. And again, 42, beautiful day. Normal high for this time of the year, as you can see, right around 36 degrees. So we warmed up once we got through the chilly temperatures. Those overnight lows are getting down there. There's no cloud cover to hold the heat in, so we have no blanket, so to speak, for the Wenatchee Valley. Our record high, 58, nowhere near that. And again, we're still talking about that bitterly cold winter of 1985 with a record low of 8 degrees, 8 hours and 42 minutes, or 41 minutes roughly, of daylight today. Again, we're losing about 2 and a half to 3 minutes of daylight each day as we get closer to the winter solstice coming up on December 21st. So, as we go through these high temperatures over the next uh, day, it's gonna, uh, you'll notice it's a little bit cooler than uh, what we've been having. And again, with no cloud cover overnight, it's going to make us a little on the chilly side. Moses Lake, 38, afraid out in the basin, uh, 40 degrees. Afraid it got down into the teens uh, later, uh, earlier this morning. Quincy at 38, Wenatchee will top off right around 41 degrees. And some of those areas that are more prone to see less daylight, such as Lake Wenatchee, Leavenworth, you're going to see highs uh, in the upper 30s tomorrow and 38, your forecast high for our friends up north in beautiful OMAC. So the weather story is this, big ridge of high pressure, it's a monster. Uh, yesterday at this time it was over western Montana, it has shifted towards us. The center of the high pressure ridge that we're talking about is actually right over eastern Montana and it's slowly working its way towards the Pacific coast, but it's so big and so well entrenched. All these storms, and there are Pacific storms out there that are trying to work their way through they're getting knocked out of alignment by this big ridge of high pressure. But we also have an air stagnation advisory, as we talked about at the top of the newscast. That means the lid is on. Of course, we have warm air trapped above the cold air in the valley. The air, the pollutants come up, the carbon monoxide, your wood burning stoves, they hit that lid and they come right back down again. Air stagnation advisory is scheduled to expire Saturday morning at 10 a.m. It may actually be extended because, extended because this ridge of high pressure it is a big ridge of high pressure. The only real difference between all of the stable weather that we've had over the last 72 hours or so is we're going to see a little bit more patchy freezing fog in the morning than what we've had. So a little patchy freezing fog and a few more low hanging clouds that will eventually burn off by mid to late morning and most of the afternoons through the forecast period will be quite sunny until we get to about Sunday. That's going to change more partly, partly sunny skies, patchy freezing fog. But this tug of war between the clouds and the fog are going to, the, the, the clouds are going to get the upper hand by the time we get to Monday. Again, the big story, this big ridge of high pressure not going anywhere. It's going to give us some dirty air uh, for the Wenatchee Valley. It's not particularly bad, but the air stagnation advisory is going to stick around through Saturday the 5th. And I wouldn't be surprised if they extended that at all. So again, Patchy freezing fog in the morning is going to start making its presence felt tomorrow morning and then the same thing on Thursday and Friday and Saturday. Perhaps a few more clouds on Sunday. They think finally after these parade of storm systems comes through and starts knocking that ridge of high pressure out of alignment, it will finally allow maybe some rain, uh, maybe even some freezing rain, paying us a visit on Monday night and Tuesday. Outside of that, weather in a world, world in a word, stable, just stable indeed. So. Let's take a look at it one more time for your viewing pleasure, your seven day forecast. Again, a little bit of patchy fog, not that much. We topped off at 42 today. We do it again tomorrow, a little bit of patchy fog and some low hanging clouds. It will burn off by mid morning. Quite a bit of sunshine on Thursday afternoon. Friday, partly sunny with some patchy fog. You notice the temperature is a little bit lower on Friday and Saturday and on Sunday. Same scenario, some patchy fog in the morning burns off by mid to late morning quite a bit of sunshine in the afternoon. All of these temperatures, temperatures that you see slightly above normal, both for our afternoon highs and our overnight lows. Next chance of measurable precipitation, <clears throat> maybe Tuesday night into Wednesday. That's your forecast. We got more to cut to with Jefferson and sports with Eric. 
You're watching the NCAA Life Evening News. Hi, my name is Blaine Johnson. I'm at Global Elite Motors. We're tied in with Global Car Care down here locally. So we're not your typical car buying experience. Somebody can come down here, take a look at what we have, and if we have the right vehicle for you, we'd be glad to help you out with it. Um, a lot of times we are able to go out and find specific vehicles for somebody so that it fits their needs, their budget, and all the things that you want without you being obligated right away. If you're looking for a good, reliable car, come see me, Blaine Johnson, down at Global Elite Motors. Is search engine optimization right for my business? Maybe. Studies show the first and second search results get 50% of all the clicks. But you have to fight national chains to get there. If the user has to scroll down to find you, tough luck. You could hide a dead body on page two and the whole zombie apocalypse on page three. Or you could spend less and get an ad in the Impact Big Print phone book, giving local businesses a chance to shine. Impact Directories. Bigger print, better book. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Wednesday to you. The trying season for the Washington State football team got a boost Tuesday with the return of Max Borgie to practice. The junior running back out of Arveda, Colorado, has been sidelined with a back injury since training camp. It's not clear whether Borgie will travel with the team to play at USC Sunday, but Coach Nick Rolovich says the team was certainly happy to have him back. Yeah, it's good to have him out there. You know, nice to nice to see 21 out there again. And, uh, I think he just has a presence on the field that um, affects the rest of the team positively. So um, we were happy for that. How has he kind of handled all this time off? Obviously, wanted wanted to, wanted to be on the field, wanted to practice, and, and then he angry. Um, he just wants to play. You know, um, he's got a. I think he handles things, and I understand that they're amateurs. I understand they're in college, but you can still have professional habits, um, especially as you get up into your um, older years, you know, junior, senior years. And um, I, I think he knows what it's going to take for him to make it to the next level and um, excel there. And then I think he's already taken on those habits um, and that mindset. So. Um, yeah, I, I would say he was angry. The Cougars have been idle for a couple of weeks due to a coronavirus outbreak among the players. To provide a little more time for healing and testing, this weekend's game with the 20th ranked Trojans has been moved to Sunday. Kickoff set for 4.30 in the afternoon at Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. You can watch the game on FS1. Well, the Washington Huskies are riding high after a huge second half comeback win against Utah last Saturday and find themselves ranked 22nd heading into a home game against Stanford this weekend. The Cardinal face a situation in their home county where COVID restrictions force the question of Husky coach Jimmy Lake. Is Stanford the only team you're preparing for to play on Saturday? How about that? Is that, is that the first time anybody's ever asked that question? <laughs> oh, man, 2020, got to love it. Uh, yes, uh, this is the only team that we are preparing for. Uh, obviously, an unfortunate situation down there in their county, and there's, you know, the 49ers are dealing with it, as well as uh, San Jose, I believe. Uh, and so my understanding is they uh, can't have any uh, team activities, contact, uh, sports happen in that county, and so they have to move elsewhere. Uh, to get their practices in. And then, of course, the game's up here in Seattle, so the, the game site's not going to be an issue. It's going to be more about their game week prep. Uh, and from what I understand, they're researching facilities uh, in the Northwest uh, to be able to practice uh, and prepare uh, to play their game up here in Seattle on Saturday. Washington's schedule was changed last minute to a week ago when the annual Apple Cup game with Washington State was canceled due to the COVID outbreak in the Cougar program. Lake and the Huskies will kick off Saturday at Alaska Airlines Field at Husky Stadium. At 1 o'clock, the game will air live on Fox. Well, now is the uh, second season with the Seahawks. DK Metcalf is establishing himself as one of the top receivers in the NFL. He surpassed 1,000 yards last weekend in Seattle's 23-17 win over Philadelphia and now leads the NFL in receiving yards. His coach and teammates are certainly happy. Number 14 plays on their side. DK has a huge night. Um, I, I heard that he went over 1,000 yards. I don't know if that is. That, that, that is yeah, that's a, that's a cool thing to, to have happen this early in the season. 
what a big year he's having and, and a big night tonight. They played great. DK's doing his thing. He's 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 making it known that you know he's not just out there playing catching the football. He's doing the whole game and he's blocking and giving good effort and being tough and all that. One of the defensive coaches came up to me and it kind of made me mad that he was like, um, you know, I was I was in Detroit with uh, Megatron, but you're not there yet. Um, you know, in my mind, I'm not trying to be Megatron. I'm trying to be me. So, um, you know, it had, had a little uh, chip on my shoulder the whole game. He's a, he's a beast. He's a, he's a man child, man. Uh, he can be that next Megatron. Uh, he's that, he has that type of ability. He has that type of skill set, man. He has that talent. Um, so it's only a matter of time, you know, uh, before he, he really starts to explode. I don't think he's really taken off yet. You know, I, 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 I firmly believe that he has more in the tank, and, and that's the special thing about it, man. So I'm always pulling for him. Um, I know he's going to continue to work hard and get better. He's, in my opinion, he's unmatchable. You know, he just can do everything. I think the best thing about him is he loves his teammates. He loves the work ethic. He loves the process. Um, he loves the journey. Uh, he's only 22, you know. He's growing. He's getting better and better. Um, and so he just got to stay the course. Metcalf and the Seahawks will host the New York Giants Sunday at Lumen Field. Kickoff set for 105. Game will be televised on Fox. Well, the Gonzaga Bulldogs are meeting the West Virginia Mountaineers in the 2020 Jimmy V Classic today. Game is underway at Bankers Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. It's on ESPN. Number one, Zags are off to a 2-0 start, while the Mountaineers are ranked 11th and 3-0 on the season. Hey, by the way, this weekend with the Seahawks game, it's their uh, cleats for a cause. Uh, we'll hear from Coach Pete Carroll about his kicks coming up tomorrow right here. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Jefferson, back to you. Thank you, Eric. Good to see you again. Finally from us tonight, local Congress members are holding virtual meeting events for their North Central Washington constituents over the next week. We don't normally see these folks. They're often in D.C. But on December 8th, that's next Tuesday, 4th District Representative Dan Newhouse partners with the Small Business Administration to host a webinar for Central Washington small businesses. That starts at 10 a.m. and guests can register in advance through Washington's Small Business Development Center, WSBDC.org. The next day, December 9th, 8th District Representative Kim Schreier holds her telephone town hall at 5 p.m. It's her last town hall of 2020 after several of these events. You can RSVP to join that meeting through Schreier's congressional website. Now let's check, it, check back in with Dan Kuntz to hear about what's in the works for NCW Life's daily morning show, Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? Thanks, Jeffrey. And on a Thursday edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, we'll check in with Richard Rock, the general manager of Link Transit. They've had to make all kinds of adjustments, schedule changes, COVID protocols, cleaning, disinfecting. How's Link Transit doing with the latest surge in COVID-19 cases? It's been a while since we checked in with Richard. He'll be my guest tomorrow. I'll wake up on Anchee Valley. We'll talk about the weather with this air stagnation advisory going on. We'll have the forecast. We'll have sports. We'll have news. We'll have everything you need to start your Thursday. And you want to start your Thursday live and local on Wake Up on Anchee Valley. By golly, that's this program tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Jefferson, back to you. Thank you, Dan. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website, ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we would like to hear from you. You can send us an email, news at ncwlife.com, or give us a call, 888-6295. That's 888-NCWL. I'm Jefferson Robbins. I'll be back here with you tomorrow night at 5, 6, and 10. Stay healthy until then. Don't forget your mask. Hi, I'm Kevin Prosser, and this is my print shop, Color Effects in Cashmere. Color Effects offers screen printing, embroidery, and digital printing on t shirts, jerseys, bags, banners, signs, and more. With 30 years' experience, you won't be disappointed with the quality and quick turnaround times you will get at more than a fair price. Please call Color Effects.